What's up, everybody? This is The Run with Manny Wilson. Today, I am here with a good friend of mine, Brad Clark, Bradley Clark. Yes, he, yes. He knows his hoops, I guess. Um, he's a great friend of mine. He plays a little ball himself, but he's not better than me. So we're just going to jump straight into the topic. I'm glad he ignored that comment because that's a whole other debate. <laughs> but, okay, all right, so my topic today, man, is some of these NBA stars in the league, they are, like, crazy loyal to their hometown or, like, they're crazy loyal to the team they got drafted to. And it's just, like, when is enough loyalty to one team enough? Like, You know, that's a great question. You know, uh, I guess my biggest thing is uh, you got to remember it's a business. So, like, even if you go to the NBA, yeah, it's your dream to play professional basketball, but at the end of the day, it's a business. And when you're doing business, as you know, because, you know, you're a businessman, as you know, yourself, (laughs) but, but, you know, when you're doing business, you don't really, you don't really show loyalty to someone who's never been loyal to you. You know what I mean? So, like, if, if you think about it, besides, what, Dwayne Wade and Heat, you know, they show loyalty there's only a few players in the NBA yeah. that actually got yeah. loyalty shown, you know, from from their organization. So, like, yeah. from a business perspective, you know, never think, like, oh, they won't trade me. You know, they, they won't get rid of me. They're going to give me the money I deserve. Because at the end of the day, they looking like they looking at you like a stock. Like, you know what? <laughs> Your stock is going down. What can I trade to get to get my money up? You but, know what I mean? But sometimes it's, it's the other way around sometimes. Sometimes it's the players that's being so loyal to these GMs and like the coaches and it's like yeah you're not winning you're not winning like Anthony Davis he is man he is too good to be on the Pelicans right now I don't understand it I really don't understand it. he is a player that I just don't understand like why he would if, never leave if if him and the organization was in the relationship he'd be the perfect boyfriend right now <laughs> no <laughs> he you're right going, he ain't going you're nowhere right. <laughs> like it's it's i don't see the i don't see why he wouldn't want to leave i'd rather just go somewhere and i understand that he wants to be loyal which is cool and you know i respect you know players who decide like you right. know i want to bring a championship home i want to bring a championship to this city that i'm playing in and that's good but like it's just like when is enough right. enough because Anthony Davis he's averaged a double double Ever since his rookie year. After his rookie year, he's yeah. averaged a double-double double with 20-plus points. Yeah, he's a monster. And points and rebounds. So he, I, and I, he plays like, man, when you watch him play, he plays the game like it's just too easy. Like it's just yeah, too slow. Yeah, it looks and, like he's not trying. <laughs> honestly, but he puts 35 on honestly, your head. And if, if you put him with other superstars on, on any other team, it could be he'd have a much better chance yeah. of playing on a bigger stage somewhere in the playoffs and, like, you know, right. actually having a shot at the title run because – he he never made it past the second round in the playoffs. Right. And the only star he's ever played with was DeMarcus Cousins, and he barely even got to play with right. him. Because he was hurt. Of, yeah, he got hurt. Yep. So he barely even got to play with him. But if he just could play with anybody else that was like a superstar or, you know. They could do damage. Yeah, they but could. I guess to, to, so I guess to go back to your question, um, like when is it enough? Like when <laughs> is it enough? I think that it's enough when you when you become a loser. Like after so many, I'm seriously, seriously. After so many years, when you start losing, it's enough. It's like treat it right. like a business decision. Right. I feel if like your stock has been going down for two years straight, are you gonna really try to hold on to? It? Or are you but, gonna you gonna at least debate see, about okay, maybe I should trade in this and get some Apple stock. You know what I mean? Like maybe I should go to the Warriors and invest in Google. Like, like for real, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. But see. Sometimes when players wait until until that time when they've lost so long, then the time is up. They're old and beat down. I'm talking about Carmelo. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. It could be Carmelo in that case. You can use him as a good example because we don't know how but he he's wasn't being look. loyal to the Knicks though. He was being loyal to his pockets. Uh, you're right. Yeah, so that's, that's true. you know that's but, true. But when is it enough? And I feel when like you become a loser. See that difference between like Carmelo and and um, like Kevin Durant. With Kevin Durant, I feel like he. He, that came to his mind when he went to the Warriors. I feel like it was like, okay, look, I can stay here and I can keep trying and trying and trying yeah. to beat all of these teams that's stacking up, or I can just you know go and do what I love to do, which is play basketball. Because if you if you go to an open gym or if you go to a court and you play basketball, so if you go to an open gym and you play for a court or play on a court and someone on that team is is 
or the whole team actually is like trash and you're the only right. person playing but you working your tail off trying to get right. two wins back to back so you can keep right. playing and then you still lose and now you got now you got <laughs> to sit like, out four games cuz exactly. too many people right. exactly but it, it, the game is much easier it's much more fun when you're playing with people that's free and when you you know when you play with people who are good and right. and when you're on the road like say if if you're playing at the gym and you're on a high streak of like seven games I it becomes you, fun. Yeah, I don't but, think you got that much win anymore. But <laughs> but seven games. Like, if you're playing seven games and people walk on the court and they're like, yeah, that team been on for the last seven games. It's a bigger stage. People want to see, like, oh, okay, well, let me watch while I warm up. Let me watch while I put my right. sneakers on. And, you know, it's just. You know, it's like, it's, I guess kind of going off of that, it's it's one of the reasons why I, I actually really like KD move. Warriors, <laughs> of course, you because do. I mean, and it's not because I'm a Draymond fan or I, you know I like California. You're right, it's, it's not because you're a bandwagon. <laughs> it's not because I'm a bandwagon. What it is is because his decision to go was, I'm gonna find out a way to become a champion. I'm gonna make my money regardless, so I'll stack up while becoming a champion. Instead yeah. of stacking up, just think, if you take the money he's making the OKC and his investments in LA and all that stuff, right? And you compare it to what he was going to make in OKC, or uh, let Oklahoma. me flip it, let me flip it. When he was in Oklahoma, take the amount of money he would have now versus, or have then versus what he has now. What's the difference? What, a few championships. million? Championships. Few million? Right, different. championships. That's like even with, even with Kimball Walker. Kimba Walker is another one of those players. I think he came out with a statement and said he he wants to be a Hornet for life. Or he said something about staying with the Hornets for a long time. And this when I heard thing. it, the first thing I, I thought of was just like, dude, nobody is on the Hornets. The best player he's played with that's that was any kind of superstar was Dwight Howard. And Dwight Howard, he to me, been, he has a lack of never, ability to he's compete. He's never been a superstar. Well, technically he has because he's been <laughs> an all star no, game. He's, but, yeah, he's been but he's been an all star. When he was younger, he was. But he's he was, never been I've, a superstar. I've never you, been a big. You fan, cannot bro. be a superstar when you not when you're not a jack of all trades. Name yeah. one superstar who couldn't do it all. Like superstar, yeah. where you like top of the crop. Because superstar, <laughs> he was an all star. He was an all star. Carmelo superstars. Never you, know, you know who I think about when when we talk about superstars? Okay. And then I'm gonna let you get to the next question because oh, yeah. I know we got I know we gotta keep it moving. <laughs> when I say superstar, I think of Michael. I think of Kobe. <laughs> I think of LeBron. I think of KD. I think of Dwayne Wade. Yeah. Kyrie. Like Okay, okay. People who when you put them on the court, they can play D, they can shoot. They can rebound. They can do whatever. And I know you' about to bring no. up my man Steph Curry, no, I but he's a superstar. No, no, then, I agree. <laughs> I, I agree with you. When the uh, the first four names that you named: LeBron, Jordan, and Kobe. I see what you mean. And the superstars, KD. I say KD too. Yeah, KD. I, I agree with that because superstars are like they're bigger than all stars. Yeah. Because they're just they like the whole they're the global. Level. They're global. Right. Like exactly. LeBron is global. Is it, LeBron is global? Right. Steph is. Getting Ask there. me the last time Carmelo been global. Since Syracuse. No. If that. Oh, yeah. You, yeah, if that. you were back further than if, me. I was going to say nuggets. If that. But right. it's just. Well, like, yeah, even. Ahead, my even no, no. You're all good. You're all good. But, like, even. Like I said, Kimba, you know. Um, and then teams who aren't as bad as, like, the Hornets or as bad as the Pelicans. Like, they're still getting to the playoffs. But mm-hmm. they're not doing anything in the playoffs. Like, like um, Portland. They get to the playoffs. Uh, Wizards, they get to the playoffs, but they're not doing anything in the playoffs. Right. Like they go, especially Portland. I, I, I just, I feel so bad for like Dame and McCollum because they're so, they're good. I like both of them, but they, they it's are. just, I don't know, I don't know if it's the, the lack of bringing people in or, or what. It, I don't, I don't know what it it's, is. Let me, I'll give you an example. This is how I feel about them. Um, I brought up the gym scenario, right? So, when you playing at the gym. You on a whack team, right? <laughs> you get so used to not passing the ball and doing everything yourself that when you actually have a little bit of talent that's next to you, you don't change the way you play. Russell Westbrook. That's what that's what I just heard. But no, that's no, too, you're right but, though. But, you're right. You're right. It's, I, it's a little bit of that. Like it's been such a two man show. And granted, they have some injuries and stuff like that. You know, yeah. with with other players. But yeah. it's been such a two man show that when they get further in the playoffs. And you start talking about going against 
I'll even give a, a OK, OKC some credit, I guess. But when you talk about going with, you know, going against the top of the crop, like but they, this, they this, shut those two down. I mean, great, the, they're they're great players. They're great players. But them two together is easier to stop than it's, so-called when KD and Westbrook were together. Yeah, and like, you know what? It's crazy that you say that too, because like like I mentioned, Brad, Bradley Bill and John Wall and the Wizards. Uh, there's there that's another two pair. That's another two pair who yeah. like who are who are very loyal. But like it's funny how you said like once those two players get shut down, because that's what LeBron would do whenever LeBron would play against them. It'd be okay. We just either focus double team on, double team on one and let the other one try his hardest and let John Wall shoot. <laughs> yeah, and he, and he wasn't gonna and that, and that never got them a win when they played the Cavs or or I don't think they played when uh, Brown was in Miami, but when I know they did when he was in on the Cavs, but. It was just like you know. It was. It's hard. It's hard when you when it's a two it's man on, show. Yeah, it's hard. and it's just like you know. For me, I know. For me, I much rather go to a different team and you know contribute to that team. Whether my stats go down a little bit or whether they stay the same, I rather go there play on a bigger stage. Bradley. You know, you're gonna get look. You're gonna get more endorsements if you play on a bigger stage and like you doing yeah. good. Like look at Draymond Green. Draymond, he he, he he's a heart and soul of the other Warriors, but he, he gotta, he's not the player to average forty. No, he's, he's not. not the player to average forty and or I like see him the in commercials top four. doing braces. <laughs> exactly, hey. but like I'd rather take a, a smaller role and go play with a better team where I can have more fun, rather winning. than winning. Yeah, and like, winning, winning and winning championships rather than just stand with the low low market playing on a smaller stage, getting good stats, but it's going unnoticed. So, like, I, let, so if we talk about some of the duos though, like people. So you said John Warren, Bradley Beal. Mm-hmm. Me personally. If I believe neither one of them have has a reason to be loyal, because <laughs> is you right? Like as an organization, from the very beginning when John Wall came in, they made him the star, you know, the star of the team because at the time he he was the best, he was the best one on the team. Yeah. But yeah. in terms of money, it's not like he's getting an out, you know, a crazy contract where he's like, I can't leave. Yeah, that's true. They, don't get get anywhere in the playoffs, and like you said, partly it's because of the two man show. Um, if he improved his his shooting, if you you know if he if he improves his if he shot the three like Kimba, yeah, that'd, it will make him so much more dangerous. They wouldn't beat LeBron. Had, they would have never beat LeBron. Could be score if he could shoot like Kimba. If I he could shoot, that. but you, know, I looked up some stats. This is the thing. I, I me personally, I want Bradley Beal to go to L.A. Oh my! God. I want him to go to L.A. Come join LeBron. <laughs> you see this? Thing? You was Warriors bandwagon now. LeBron went. Back. Well, I'll give you credit. You always been a Lakers fan. I've always I'll been a Lakers fan. But it's, just, it's just when when it was oh going down the drain, I just went with the other California team. <laughs> That's all that happened. Oh but my goodness! This stat I pulled up. Okay, and this was interesting. And I know this is this doesn't have really to do much with the staying loyal. This is just talking about players and where I think that they should go in turn, like if they weren't loyal, where they should go. But yeah, okay. John Wall, with him not being able to shoot the three, he needs to be in the area where he can distribute. He can distribute, right. Like yeah. pretty much like how Rondo was. John Wall last season, he shot 37% from three. Okay? <laughs> Lonzo Ball <laughs> I knew he shot was going 30%. To, I knew he was going. So he's not too far. <laughs> and then I know people might listening listening to this might bring up Kobe, okay? Kobe shot 37% in his prime, right? But Kobe used to shoot like forty of them a game. Kobe did shoot a lot. <laughs> so, and and an, another thing, because you brought up John Wall and Lonzo, John Wall can shoot free throws. Lonzo Ball can. No, you right. You're you're right. right. He's a point guard. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm just teasing. But but my my biggest thing is for John Wall, if he wants to win the championship, he has to, like improve. He, he has he yeah he can improve, improve himself. But I don't view John Wall as the person that's gonna win me a championship by himself. No. There's only Definitely. one not, not, one needs, player in the needs, NBA that can do that. And LeBron. And that's LeBron. Nobody yeah. KD go to a team by himself. He he's not doing I it. I don't think he could. He could lead them. He, he could probably lead them lead to them, the yeah, to conference the finals. finals or he's probably not, the finals. But he's hey, I don't not want, taking it taking it home like yeah. how LeBron will. Hey, LeBron, man. LeBron he, will he shove the ball all. down your throat <laughs> he does it before all. he lose. He does it and all. Granted, people gonna bring up how he didn't do it this year. Obviously, you can't when you got twenty superstars on this, one team. Well, that's a whole other debate because this Warriors team is arguably the greatest team assembled. Arguably, and argue, yes, I said it. Arguably, yeah. the greatest team assembled in 
NBA history. Right. So, so I got. So I, I know you. I know you're the host, but I got a question for you. Okay. Okay. okay give it all right. So, if <laughs> K- take Kimba's situation, all right. Um, take John Wall. You know Bradley Beal's Dames. You know all, all the people that we talked about. Take this situation. If they were not loyal, where could you see them fitting best? Well, like in the NBA. Okay. Well, Kimba Walker. Kimba Walker. I could see him on a team where we're just. He's able. I need, he needs help. Like even if he, he doesn't does. go to a team like with a loaded team or, but like put him with Anthony Davis or like just because I brought up Anthony Davis earlier, I'm yeah. just using. Well, that Rondo's as an not there, so that'd be a great. That'd yeah, be a you great put Kimba there with Anthony Davis. Anthony Davis has help. Kimba has help. They got a big and a guard. They got they got that. So that would yeah. be perfect for him, and it would be a good thing. That for him, that way he's able to score and he's able to still distribute because he has one teammate who can who can shoot, he can dribble, right, he, right, he's still right. athletic, he has a good big, but that's that's somewhere where I think he would need. But him playing with a whole bunch of nobodies on right. on that Hornets no. team is just like ridiculous. Like the best player on that Hornets team besides Kimba is I think. Nicholas Batum, <laughs> and, and nobody even talks about him. They, even, they don't we, sell his jersey nowhere. <laughs> they don't, you know, he might not even have an NBA card. <laughs> <laughs> You're right, but Batum. it's just it's yeah, man. It's it's just rough. I think like for the Wizards, uh, this is the last thing. Then we got we got to move on to the next topic. Yep. But like for the Wizards, they aren't as bad as um, Portland because they have they have a pretty they have they have good role players. They have they good do. role players like Porter and right. the, uh, the other guy who can shoot. I'm not. I right. can't remember. But his it, name. and it helps that John Wall and Bradley build are better defenders. Yeah, it does. And they got they got Gortat, but it's just like them as a whole. They need more. Gortat. They just need more. Mm-hmm. Gort trash. <laughs> oh, stop it! All right, Gortat so, trash. So, so to move on with the next topic is I'm um, switching over to the NFL. Okay. So, okay. Um, the defensive back. For the Minnesota Vikings, Andrew Sindaho, he wore a hat to training camp that said "Make football violent again," yep. and like I, I agree with him. Like we should make football violent again. But remind you, during the season, he suffered a concussion from it was an unexpected collision between players against the Saints, and it was it wasn't like a dirty shot or anything. It was literally he he. I guess they were in the zone. I can't remember the play specifically, but he started to like just move over to to area like or uh, strafing or or whatever it was called. Or he was just moving on over to the right. zone, and the receiver was crossing, and they collision, and he just got hit the wrong way. And uh, the NFL took that harshly because it's like, oh, it's another concussion. It's a big concussion. Like, should like what's what's up? All these players, all these players are getting concussions, and we got to make the game safer. And for him to wear a hat saying make football violent again, I've always thought football was a violent sport. And, Already. you know, that's what makes it entertaining is seeing people get hit. Well, not by accident, of course, but like seeing people get hit in a way where, you know, it's, it's regardless, you're going to get hit in the game. And like these right. guys lift weights, they train their whole life, they lift weights, they eat healthy, they build their muscles, and they play football. And it's so, a, they tackle each other. Like, wh- how can you expect for the game to be, like, completely okay? Like, well, no, it, I, they I, might I, as so, well make the game flag football if no one wants to get – if they're making it where no one wants to get hurt. I mean, NFL players know what they're getting themselves into. That's when, true. When they decide to play but, NFL. But as an NFL – like, if you were an NFL owner, would you rather be an, – and a player, would you rather the league be – too careful or not careful at all okay now i could i could see where the league could be too careful but i mean they call targeting off of anything now they call they throw so many flags and like i see the league getting softer and softer as as the league progresses every time like they make a new hitting rule or or anything i see it getting softer and softer like every season and it's just like at a point where Okay, can I even hit this guy? Like, yeah. are we playing touch or can I hit this guy? If he's running full speed, if it's, if you're running back and you're running full speed at me, like, can I even hit you with all my force? Because if I lay you out or if, if you fall wrong and one of my teammates, like, tries to go for the ball and jumps on the ball, it's boom, he's ejected. Nope, dirty. Get him out of here. And it's right. like, wow. Well, like, maybe, see, so maybe if 
it wasn't necessarily like ma- they can always tone down the cause, but I still think, or maybe not the cause, they can tone down the uh, ejections. That'd be that that can be a separate thing. They can always tone that down, but in terms of the different flags that they might throw, if it if it in fast motion it looked like a dirty hit, usually they're gonna call it as a dirty hit. But the reason why I disagree with the statement is because as a person, if just think, if you're the NFL owner, you you want players in your league to be able to last longer. Yeah, you want you yeah. want you don't want to have to face. Oh, okay, this guy played for ten years and now he has brain damage. You don't want him to, you know you don't want out of yeah. out of every ten NFL player, three of them, twenty years after playing, have like a mental illness. So yeah. like, in, in not saying that it does, cause I'm not sure what the statistic really is about how how that is and you know and head injuries. But I'm just saying that I think as a if I am the owner of the NFL, I would rather make sure I'm more safe than sorry. You know, I I, I partially agree with that. Some of it I do agree with. I feel like some of the owners would want their players to be safe. And then again, some owners, like, don't really care because they're like, we got a whole Mm -hmm. new set of college kids coming soon. So I feel like it goes both ways. But one point I do want to point out is that when a play, this is a player who, who suffered a concussion. And the average span of, like, a college you know, like say a running or not college running back, say a, a NFL running back, is usually about three to four years. Mm-hmm. So that player knows what he's getting into. He knows that, you know, he's going to get banged up. He probably has a short span, so, you know, he want to collect his money and all that. That's a whole different conversation. But because a lot of things with new media in, like, the old days, back in the old days, it wasn't as much media and, like, everybody wasn't reporting every single injury and, like, every single thing that might have happened. I think that made it so much worse. Mm-hmm. I think it made it so much worse because now it's almost like where reporters and everything, they hear everything that goes in on. They go they hear everything that goes on in the locker room in terms of, like, injury-wise. And it's so, it's so easy for things like that to leak out. Like, it, and it's... I think that's part of the reason why they took such a dramatic step on this concussion protocol and like a in terms of players having and playing with concussions. I think that made a right. huge difference because they're like, well, now we have to make we have to make the game safe because people outside of our organization are hearing about the things that our players are going through. Right. Like they're hearing so about go back these- to it though. If you if you purposely, I don't think they have call, a choice. But <laughs> they don't have a choice. Why, why, if they, why if wouldn't they, they? If they go back to it, they're gonna get more backlash on. You're you're just tearing NFL players apart. Well, no, they're that's, gonna that's get more I'm backlash saying. from like journalists. But I'm saying making the game, um, making the what was what was this quote again? Make make football violent again. Yeah, or, making or, the game violent on purpose, which can possibly create more injuries, which could possibly take you back to how it was, which would. Once again, history but, would just repeat itself. Let me tell you. Because then okay. they, it's going to get okay. bad. I got an example. Backlash, and then they're going to bring I got it an back. Example. And it's like, okay, we got to make okay. it more safer. I got an example. So when you watched Ray Lewis play, when you would watch Ray Lewis play, was it or was it not always entertaining? When you see him light someone up, it was always entertaining, no, right? It was it, always but, entertaining, no, it wasn't, right? But it wasn't dirty hits. It I'm wasn't. Just, it wasn't. Right. And, and a lot of hits, and some people may say some of the hits were dirty. Some people may argue, like, okay, well, some of the hits that people would do, like, during that time period were, were dirty. Right. And some hits now are still so what dirty if, that doesn't get caught. I mean, people get hit right. now, and it's still uncalled, but, but I it, think I think the quote should be, make football entertaining again by letting players be themselves. That's what made Ray oh. Lewis so exciting. He came out the tunnel with turf in his hand, yelling. <laughs> like, that's what made... And then when he got on the field, he was vocal. Nowadays, uh, Mark... Lynch, Lynch grab his nuts in the end zone, and now people acting like you know NFL owners acting like the world ended. Like, yeah. well, that if, that's a whole other problem too. Is um, if the, you the big gap. I think that instead of making it violent, violent, violent again, just let players be themselves. That way, like I said, I don't think that Ray Lewis's hit were dirty. He used to wrap up, and sometimes you would get a big bang. <laughs> but I mean, nine times of the ten, it was highlighting him running his mouth. Like yeah, but you know, like but, shoving, shoving and but, stuff doesn't matter. Like all that stuff, that's entertaining. I would, I, I, cause when I picture when I when someone says make football violent again, I picture 
okay, let us do, let us make dirty hits with no cause. Well, they don't even play like that. NFL don't, players don't play I'm like saying, that. that. That's how and, I view no, it. I got something to your argument because you were saying like let them be themselves. So yeah. if they if they if they're being themselves, naturally the game is already violent. Naturally, yeah. it's just how it is. So but if they're mean, being themselves, it's gonna result in the game being violent anyway. Because you have to already be aggressive to play the sport. When you're playing a sport, you can't come in a sport passive. Like, if you're on defense, you, you can't be a passive defensive player. Like, oh, I don't want to hit nobody. I don't want to hurt anyone. You can't you play can't. golf? Well, that's golf. We're talking about football. <laughs> We're talking golf, about football. You got to play some good deep. But, oh, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about football. But if, even if they're being themselves, because, because the game is already violent and that's the way it was created, it's – hard for someone to be like it's hard for them to just take that beast out of them right. if they've been playing the game since they were younger since they were like nine eight and all they've been taught is is take that man out the game light him up you know run right. him over truck him put him in the dirt put his helmet in the ground right. no, if that's right. all they've been taught run him straight to the ground by the time they get to the nfl my shot my shot said it best you remember that about that, <laughs> that interview what was it? What was it? I when he was when the, he did the interview and the guy was talking to him about um, oh, yeah. how does it feel like See, when you, you hit him in the mouth over exactly. and over and, and, and over right. and over and and that's what they're taught, man. They from playing from a young kid to once they finally get in the NFL and they get on that much bigger stage, they're all of a sudden just told, hey, you know, hey, whoa, relax. Oh, you can't be hitting people like that. No, don't don't kill that man. Don't hit that man it's that it's hard. It's the same in the NBA. Well, that's a different story. That's a whole different story. I'm just, I'm just saying, all sports are going to get toned down when you get to the highest level because when you're at the highest level as a grown adult playing, you're you're capable of so much more than well, where you were six years okay, before but, you got into the but league. But we, we all know the NBA has got way too soft. That We all know that. That's not even a debate. The NBA has got way too soft compared to what it was like in the 80s and 90s. Well, even no, the 2000s. I would two rather thousands. have it like how it is. Oh, no. Oh, maybe man, maybe not as bad, people, but look, man, people used to push me, push people out there. It air. was a man's man, game. Man, if I'm it going was, in the air <laughs> trying to dunk and I got one one hand and my other arm is in the air and I get pushed, how am I gonna catch myself when I hit the ground? Ask Michael Jordan. <laughs> yeah, okay. Ask Michael how many Jordan. bruises he think he had? Well, hey, they, he six for six. <laughs> he did. Michael Jordan had to wear a helmet he playing out there with the Celtics and stuff in the Pistons. He, he did it, man. Hey, it was a man's game back then. Now yeah, he was the, the only one. Why you think everybody in the NBA is so skinny now? Because they don't have to worry everybody about that. Everybody skinny? Just the, besides LeBron. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why he dominate like he does. What you mean? That boy Steph Curry got, got a little buff. Oh, I've seen seeing him on the Snapchat stop doing it. his uh, push-ups. Oh, stop it. <laughs> if you don't stop it. Lonzo Ball getting big, too. Lonzo Ball is his biggest SpongeBob. Stop it. Boy, Come right. on now. All right, man. Um, So thank you for coming today, man. I really appreciate talking to no you. No problem. You know. I appreciate you having me, man. Yeah, no problem at all. So thank you guys for tuning in to The Run with me, Manny Wilson, and my great friend, Brad, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Brad, you are a fun So be sure to find me on Twitter at underscore Manny 3 yo to follow the latest sports updates as well as the newest episodes of The Run. You guys have a great day today.